Hello friends, this video on tissues part 13 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Go ahead. So let us start with the support connective tissue and the first support tissue which we will talk about is bone. So let us now talk about bone. So bone is a strong non-flexible tissue. So in case of bone, the strength is more but the flexibility is less. So we will see what is it. The, what is there in the structure of the bone which makes it less flexible but more strong. <clears throat> it forms the framework of the body. As we can see, the framework of the body is formed of all bones. So here you can see that when you look at this, just look at the foot, the bones at the foot. So here you can see the foot and each of these bones would look somewhat like this. So each many such bones together form each of these parts and each of these parts again join together to form the entire framework of the body. That is the entire skeleton of the body. Right? <clears throat> and this skeleton finally gives rise to the human beings which we see around us. So now let us look at the structure of a bone. So again bone also being a connective tissue will again have an extracellular matrix and some cells will be embedded in that matrix. So what kind of extracellular matrix do we have in case of a bone? We have extremely dense matrix and that is why bone is so hard. So the hardness of bone is because of the extremely dense matrix which it has. This matrix is made up of calcium and Phosphorus. That is why you would have often heard that people when they are quite old, they say that their bones have become weak and they are prescribed by doctors to take calcium tablets in order to make their bones stronger. So because the strength of the bone lies in the extracellular matrix and that matrix is made up of calcium and phosphorus. So when you take calcium tablets, you are actually making or making the extracellular matrix strong and Better the extracellular matrix, stronger is the bone, right? Now, what are the cells that are embedded in the matrix? The bone cells which are embedded in the matrix are known as osteocytes. So, this is the name given to the bone cells. So, overall, the structure of a bone, there are bone cells named osteocytes which are embedded in a matrix. The matrix is very dense and it is made up of calcium and Phosphorus. Now, there are tiny little holes in the matrix which are known as canaliculi and these are used for communication between the cells. Now, inside, I mean, when you look at the structure of the bones, you have so many bone cells. I mean, you have so many osteocytes, right? So, there has to be some means of communication between the osteocytes. Now, normally in any other connective tissue, what happens is that the uh, different cells communicate via diffusion through the uh, extracellular matrix. But in case of bone, the extracellular matrix is so dense that diffusion through that extracellular matrix is very difficult. So that is why they have tiny little holes or very tiny little canal-like structures which are known as canaliculi which are used for communication between the cells. So this is how the structure looks like. This is the transverse section of a bone. Now these pink colored structures, they are the bone cells which are embedded in the matrix. Now in this matrix, you have this thread-like structures which are canaliculi. This blue thread-like structures are the canaliculi and they actually connect the uh, osteocytes. So they actually help in communication between the osteocytes. So now let us talk about the next support tissue that is cartilage. So let us see what does a cartilage do. So what is a cartilage? So cartilage is again a connective tissue. It is a semi-transparent, elastic and flexible connective tissue. So flexibility is something which was missing in bone because of the very dense extracellular matrix. But here the cartilage is flexible, it is elastic and it is semi-transparent. Now mature cartilage is relatively solid. Now cartilage plays a very important role during the development of fetus. That means when a child, when a baby is born. Now prenatal stage, what happens? The fertilized egg will actually gradually in due course of time, it will form the small little baby. So when the baby is born, what do we see? 
it has a lot of cartilage now gradually with due course of time the cartilage is replaced by bones now when a baby is actually born he has around some 270 bones but again as that baby grows up and becomes an adult there are many bones which fuse together and form a single bone and finally an adult human being has somewhere around 207 bones right so cartilage plays a very important role in the prenatal stage because initially when the child develops initially when the child is formed from the fertilized egg so during that development of the fetus it doesn't have any bone it has all cartilage and gradually the cartilage gets replaced by bones so this process of replacement when the cartilage is replaced by bones is known as ossification so anyways we are not going to deal with that but i'm just telling you the importance of cartilage but even but there are some vertebrates like sharks where the entire skeleton is made up of cartilage because in human beings the entire skeleton is mostly made up of bones so cartilage are present cartilage is present only in very few selective areas otherwise mostly bones are present throughout the human body but there are vertebrates like sharks where the entire skeleton is made up of cartilage now mature cartilage is relatively so solid mature the cartilage which is completely mature it is comparatively it is solid where do we find cartilage it is found in nose ear trachea and it is also found in the covering of bones in movable joints for example here in this picture you can see a joint so here you can see this cartilage so it acts as a covering of the bone so this was the bone and this uh, this gray colored thing which you can see as a covering of the bone that is the cartilage so in many movable joints you have cartilage as a covering of bone otherwise it is found in the ear that this portion of the ear where you generally put a earring so you can see that it is comparatively soft it is not very hard so this is the cartilage similarly you have cartilage even in, in, in on your nose and also in the trachea so these are some of the regions where cartilage is present permanently but otherwise when uh, i mean when the during the development of the fetus the entire body has cartilage gradually they get replaced by bone so what is the function of cartilage it maintains the shape and flexibility of the organ and also supports the structure so since it is flexible so flexibility becomes an important thing for example you would have seen your ear it is quite flexible you can move it you can twist and turn it so nothing happens right so that flexibility is because of cartilage these are some of the things where you actually see cartilage nose ear as well as the trachea so trachea which is again a part the windpipe of the respiratory system so even in that trachea we have cartilage so here you can see uh, have a look at the front view of how the cartilage is present over the trachea so this is these are the places where we actually see cartilage right so now the question is why is it that bone is so hard but uh, i mean bone doesn't have much flexibility but on the other hand cartilage is so much flexible so there has to be some difference in the structure of the cartilage from the bone let us now look at the structure of a cartilage as i mentioned before uh, we saw that when we talked about bone we found that bone do not have much of flexibility whereas cartilage is quite flexible so this difference in flexibility between a bone and cartilage arises because of the difference in their structures so let us now have a look at the structure of a cartilage so again like any other connective tissue the basic structure will remain the same that is it will have an extracellular matrix and in that extracellular matrix will be embedded the cells of cartilage so let us say what kind of extracellular matrix does a cartilage have so it has a solid matrix which is made up of proteins and sugars now if you look at the extracellular matrix of a bone what did you see it was extremely dense matrix right so the matrix in case of a bone was so dense that the uh, different cells of bones were not able to communicate with each other right and it was made up of calcium and phosphorus which made it extremely dense in this case also it is not a very fluid kind of a matrix but at least it is a little better than the bones so it is a solid matrix which is made up of proteins and sugar okay and what are the cells which are embedded in matrix 
the cartilage cells which are embedded in this matrix are known as chondrocytes. As I just told that there are some specific names given to the cell, cells of different connective tissue. For example, the cells of bones are known as osteocytes. Similarly, the cells of cartilage are known as chondrocytes. So C for cartilage and C for chondrocytes. So these are some of the small things which you will have to remember. And here you can see a picture of how the chondrocytes are embedded in the matrix. So this space in between are the, is the matrix and these cells which you can see here are the chondrocytes. So this is how it looks when you view it under a microscope, right? So with this, we will end our discussion on cartilage. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.